Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. The light of darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening. And the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and shine within your people here. Joyous light of heavenly glory, loving glory of God's own face, you who creation story shine on every land and race as evening falls around us we shall raise our songs to you god of day great god of shadows come and light our hearts anew in the stars that grace the darkness in the blazing sun of dawn in the light of peace and wisdom we can hear your quiet song love that fills the night with wonder love that more than my resolve love that bursts all chains asunder set us free to live you who made the heaven splendor, every dancing star of night, make us shine with gentle justice, let us cease reflect your light. Mighty God of all creation, gentle Christ to light our way, loving spirit of salvation. Lead us on to endless day. May God be, be with you all, and also with you. Let us sing our thanks to God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Blessed are you, Creator of the universe. From old you have led your people by night and day. May the light of your Christ make our darkness bright. For your word and your presence are the light of our pathways. And you are the light and life of our creation. Oh. Let my prayer voice hope like it stands before you, the lifting up of my hands as an offering to you. Oh God, I call to you. Oh God, I call to you. Come to me now. Oh, hear my voice when I cry to you. As an offering to you, keep watch within me, God. Keep in my heart, may the light of your love be burning bright. Let my prayer rise up, my King sends me for you, the lifting up of my hands. As an offering to you, all praise to the God of all. All praise to the God of all.
me higher, and lifting up of my hands as an offering to you. May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us, so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. Amen. Hello and welcome to this week's midweek Lenten worship. Following this theme of a wilderness faith, I'm Pastor Paul Peterson. I'm the senior pastor at St. Mary's Lutheran Church here in Kenosha. And it's really good to join with sisters and brothers throughout our area and worship together. This week's theme uh, concerning the wilderness is loss in the wilderness, not being lost, but experiencing loss in the desert. Our passage for reading this week is Exodus 16. The whole Israelite community set out from Elam and came to the desert of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai, on the 15th day of the second month after they had come out of Egypt. In the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, if only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food he want, we wanted. But you have brought us out into the desert to starve this entire assembly to death. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. In this way, I will test them and see whether they will follow my instructions. On the sixth day, they are to pair what they bring in, and that is to be twice as much as they gather in on other days. So Moses and Aaron said to the Israelites, In the evening you will know that it was the Lord who brought you out of Egypt, and in the morning you will see the glory of the Lord because he has heard your grumbling against him. Who are we that you should grumble against us? Moses also said, you will know that it was the Lord when he gives you meat to eat in the evening and all the bread you want in the morning because he has heard your grumbling against him. Who are we? You are not grumbling against us, but against the Lord. Apparently, life as a slave wasn't so bad after all for some. Now, it's really easy to get judgy when we read this text. I mean, we want to say, come on, people. God led you out of slavery. Sure, there's going to be a bit of wandering going on, but we're only a couple of months into this, and you're already grumbling that it's not enough, that it's not the same. Come on. I mean, you're not a slave anymore. Now, in their defense, yeah, sure, they were out of slavery, but what did they leave behind? I mean, they left behind the home that they knew, one with walls and a roof, food that filled their bodies, conversation after a hard day, a sense of security, a sense of community, even though they were slaves. And all of this is gone now. You think these first couple of months are going to be bad? This is going to last for 40 years. Like the Israelites, we want to stop wandering. We want to get out of the wilderness we want to get back all the things that we have lost. I mean, think about it. When you and I go into the wilderness, we're armed with our GPS and a good hiking shoes and a backpack that's filled with snacks that will boost our energy, plenty of water, and a finely picked out trail that has signage on it to keep us on the right path. For you and I, the wilderness is not such a bad place. It's an escape from the city. Many years ago, I took college students on a spring break trip to San Francisco. We stayed in, right in downtown San Francisco and we worked uh, serving breakfast and lunch every day at Glide Memorial Church. Really amazing place. In addition to having a food bank and also having a clothing bank, they serve over a million meals a year. That's a staggering number. Well, like I said, we stayed in downtown San Francisco and this was during the time of the first Gulf War. There were protests in that downtown area that started in the very 
early morning, right after dawn, and they lasted well past midnight into the night. Protesters on every side of the street, you didn't dare step out onto the street because there were police officers everywhere and they would put those plastic handcuffs on you and put you into a city bus and take you to one of the wharfs where they had night court and they would hold you overnight. These pro protests were long and they were disruptive of traffic and businesses. Did I mention they were loud? They were really loud. Not just the folks on the street, but all of the helicopters that were circling overhead, keeping an eye on things for TV stations and for the police. I arranged a day for us to get out of the city because I could see that it was wearing my students down. So we went to the Muir Woods, which is outside of the city of San Francisco on the other side of the Golden Gate Bridge. As I mentioned, it's the Muir Woods. The Muir Woods is named after John Muir. Uh, Wikipedia says about him that he was often known as John of the Mountains or the father of our national park system. He was a naturalist, an author environmentalist, a philosopher, a botanist, a zoologist, and a glaciologist. I didn't even know that was a term, glaciologist. And think about that, that would make a really, really long business card, wouldn't it? Well, all kidding aside, he, he once wrote, and into the forest I go to lose my mind and find my soul. This kind of sums up the feeling that our group had out there in the Muir Woods. We didn't stick together. There were groups of two that would go off that way and one or alone would go this way. <clears throat> we took different paths that day. We wandered around, you know, ran into each other at intersections and pretty much kept going. We strolled beneath the canopy of magnificent old growth redwood trees. They are a sight to behold. And though they're the stars of those trails, the growth underneath and the animals scurrying about was captivating as well. It was under that canopy that the noise disappears, where, as John Muir said, we lose our mind and we find our soul. And then we go back into the fray that is our daily life. For the people of, of Israel, this was no vacation. I mean, this wasn't a, what should we do today? Well, let's go stroll out in the wilderness. It wasn't what they were up to. They were reminded every day of how difficult life was, wandering around out there in the wilderness and being exposed to heat and wind, reminded every day while they sat around the fire or inside their makeshift tents, every day being reminded what their loss has been. They're tired. They're fed up, and frankly, they're ready to move on. Well, they weren't ready to move on, and we really aren't either, are we? We want to move on. We want to get back to normal. We want to get back to pre-pandemic. In this year-long wandering, we've all experienced loss in our wilderness, a loss of freedom, a loss of community, a loss of handshakes and hugs the loss of actually seeing everybody's entire face. And for many, the loss of loved ones. We're just desperate to move on. But we need to spend more time in this wilderness. For everyone's health, for our safety, please get your vaccination. When it's your turn, take whatever it is that they have. Let's get everyone vaccinated so we can exit this wilderness faster but we need to spend more time here. Maybe what we need to do is to find our souls again. I mean, think about what is it that we have, where is it that we've experienced loss in the wilderness this past year? What are the things that should stay lost? What are the habits, the things, even the people who don't bring us life, that don't fill our souls that we need to part with? Yeah, I know, that's not easy. But it's something we have to think hard about. Let's make the most of our time. Let's ask God, why am I here? What do you need from me? Which is a long ways from our tendency to tell God what it is that we need and what God needs to do. It's a long way from just grumbling 
about everything. I mean, Lord knows that we need a break from this wilderness. We're all ready for it. And I think with the temperatures warming up and the snow going away, it becomes even more of a thing that we desire. But when we end our time on this trail that we've all been on, this part of the wilderness, where are we going to go from there? What is it that God's calling each of us to do next? May your time in the wilderness be a really holy time, not just for lamenting about loss, but may it also be a time for you of new realizations of what God is saying to you, a time of renewal, a time of reconnecting with God, a time to think about what do I need to fill my soul? Thanks be to God. Amen. The light shines in the darkness, and the, and darkness, the darkness has not, not overcome it. An angel went from God to a town called Nazareth, to a woman whose name was Mary. The angel said to her, Rejoice, O highly favored, for God God 
have mercy, hold us in love. For all of your servants who live out your gospel. God of mercy, hold us in love. For all those who govern that justice might guide them. God of mercy, hold us in love. Of mercy, hold us in love. Grant weather that nourishes all of creation. God of mercy, hold us in love. Keep watch on our loved ones and keep us from danger. God of mercy, hold us in love. God of mercy, hold us in love. Help us, comfort us all of our days. Keep us, hold us, gracious God. Great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, Give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom come, come your will be done. done on earth as in heaven. Give, Give us today our daily bread. Forgive, Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless our God. Praise our thanks to you. May God create.